I appreciate uh, our being able to do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Chairman Bernanke, we've had a lot of discussion earlier, and I was gone for part of it, but I know we discussed mostly about the deficit, the national debt, and the effect of long-term borrowing on in terms of the Federal Reserve's policies. But let me ask this, too. Some have made claims that taking steps to put our fiscal house in order to right ourselves right now could in itself be stimulative in, in, in some effects. So what impact would implementing policies that are more focused on the long term uh, have on the short term dynamic? If we just thought more about the long term and were more forward thinking as opposed to dealing with the short term challenges that we do face right now in our, with our economy. Well, it, it is possible that a persuasive, credible, long term plan for fiscal balance would be stimulative today by lowering interest rates um, and perhaps increasing investment uh, because people would not be worried about high taxes, for example. So it's certainly possible that uh, a, a good plan would actually pay off in the present, not just in the future. And, and let me ask you this, does the, does the large budget deficit right now, does it, does it impair, does it really impair the Fed's ability to either stabilize prices to in, or ensure long-term growth? Is it, is it an No, I, I don't think so. And I, and I think we do have to recognize, I want to be clear, that. Uh, given the depth of the recession, the fact that revenues have fallen from the normal 19 percent of GDP to 15 percent, given the payments to uh, the unemployed and so on that, that are obviously important during a deep recession, it's not surprising that we have a deficit this year. Um, and I don't think that any reasonable policy could eliminate that deficit this year. Um, so I, I answer your question is no, I don't think so. But clearly a long-term unsustainable policy would have bad consequences. And then how, how does the large federal balance sheet that you opened up a little bit with your testimony and talked a little bit earlier, how does that impede your ability to set interest rates? Down? Are you talking about the Federal Reserve's balance sheet? Correct. Right. Um, well, if we had no other tools, it would create a problem because uh, with so many reserves in the system, it would, uh, such a large supply of reserves, we wouldn't be able to raise the federal funds rate, which is the price of reserves. However, as I described in my testimony, we have a number of tools, including interest on reserves and various ways of draining reserves that will allow us to raise interest rates at the appropriate time, notwithstanding the fact that we have the large balance sheet. How long do you think it will be before the federal funds rate becomes the benchmark again for overnight lending? In, in terms of how tested are these tools that you have to employ or you plan on employing in, in the near future, I guess? Well, we have um, None of them has been, uh, you know, completely tested. There's some of them, uh, we haven't been in this situation before, but on the other hand, we have um, a belts and suspenders kind of situation here. We think that the interest rate on reserves by itself could be used to tighten policy, and there are good economic reasons to think so. But beyond that, we have these additional tools that would um, allow us to drain reserves um, just to, you know, make doubly sure. And in fact, beyond that, although we don't anticipate um, selling any of the assets on our balance sheet in the near term, um, if we absolutely had to, that would be another way to reduce the uh, size of the balance sheet. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.